It's been a while since my last video, but since then I've actually had quite a few video ideas, um, which I haven't gone around to making. But before I start today's video, I am now sponsored by Bottle Cube. They are a Sydney based cube store and they currently only ship in Australia, but uh, they are looking to expand international soon. Um, they are quite small compared to the other two big Australian cube stores, so I recommend you check them out to, you know, increase competition in the Australian cube store scene. Um, it's always good to have more competition and keeps prices competitive. I'll leave a link to them in the description below, and before you ask, no I don't have a discount code. The owner thinks no one should have to pay a bit extra because they don't know a secret code. Okay, so by now it's pretty common knowledge that uh, there's corner parity on clock. Uh, it's, it affects all the pieces on every single side. Um, but I was on a train ride with Beepol just uh, two weeks ago. And just by us being together, uh, we discovered there's actually a parity for edges as well. So essentially how it works is you can think of uh, an even number of edges being turned by this move. So you can see that these two are turned, but these two are not. Um, an even number with any alignment move, like so. But you can only turn an odd number of edges with these moves. So these three are turned, but this one's not. And you can turn one edge, essentially by doing this move and then any other move that doesn't affect parity. You can try this out yourself. If you do a move like this, that changes edge parity, and then you try to solve it without uh, changing edge parity. Like you try to do this and then try to match these two. No, not possible. Do this, but that changes parity. So there isn't really any way you can solve it without doing a double move. Alright, so I'm going to demonstrate how you can sort of see how edge parity works on an actual solve. Uh, so on this hand scramble, on this side, how you want to sort of calculate edge parity is you want to visualize matching, say, L to U using only one pin. So you can do that either with uh, this move or this move. Uh, so let's say matching here to here, we're going to visualize that and we're going to see that these two are six away from each other. So actually that's a bad example, I'm going to set this up. So let's say we've matched these two. Um, you ignore the center as well. So matching these two, you can see that these two can be solved relative to each other by either doing a U5 plus or an L5 minus. So you can see from here that parity is actually mirrored, not on like a UD axis, it's mirrored on a diagonal axis actually. So it's, uh, so if you can do an, a U5 plus to solve parity, you can actually also do a, a D5 plus to solve parity, which you can see like so. Um, and if it's a D5+, plus, you can also do an R or an L5- minus to solve parity. And you can see on this side that uh, this doesn't have parity because you can visualize matching these two also matches these two. So now that we understand what edge parity is, we can reconceptualize how we see the skip that you get on, that you get on the edges. So by matching these two, and then matching this, you get this skip, which you can now reconceptualize as an edge parity skip. I also want to note that just because you have no edge parity, doesn't mean you don't have to align. So you can actually um, calculate what edge parity you have looking at the scramble as well. So in this case, uh, I did white front first. You can ignore the first four moves, and then just look at the double pin moves. And the formula for calculating it is 
u plus d minus l minus r. So we'll calculate that just tracing because that's the easiest way to look at it. So u, that's six, uh, plus d, so minus three, uh, minus r, so that's minus six, and then minus minus three for l, which is zero. So you can tell that the first side, which is white, doesn't have parity. And then on the second side, uh, u plus d minus r minus l, parity is at negative one. Um, I don't actually like doing the math for it. Uh, I think it's easier to just visualize. So yeah, you can see matching these two, there's like a negative one difference, which you can solve by plus one on UD or negative one on RL. And on this side, matching these two solves these, so there's no parity. So obviously this isn't very applicable uh, in your solving. Like it's very, edges is basically like solved. You can sort of just figure everything out intuitively. Uh, so there isn't really any use for edge parity in your actual solves. I think it's just an interesting sort of theory thing that you can incorporate into your understanding of the puzzle. But I think there may also be some application in uh, some further theory. So like me and people on the train, we were trying to figure out um, uh, an intuitive proof for God's number being 12. Uh, obviously, solving for 12 being God's number is quite hard. So we were just trying to prove that it was equal to or less than 13 initially. So just now I went on a bit of a tangent and explained why some of uh, me and people's God's methods didn't work. And like verbally saying stuff out loud, I guess kind of helped. Um, because now I, I think I've made a bit of a breakthrough in this case. Um, so what I've come, the idea I've come up with just now is essentially solving, so with any given scramble, right? You can solve uh, you can solve the first phase with one edge alignment parity move and then three single uh, pin moves and then one alignment move. So that's five moves in total. But reconceptualizing it as having one edge parity move uh, allowed me to do this. So um, I'm using the same pin set for these three moves. Uh, but I'm changing the first alignment move. Um, and then the and then the, the final like alignment move that's like this or like this or something. Um, that's left blank for now. So essentially doing any um, edge parity alignment move, say this, allows for this kind of skip. And that means that I've come up with four different pin sets, which all slightly affect the corners on the second slide side a little bit differently. And given that you can also mess with the alignment move, that gives you more possibilities. But on top of that, you can also um, change the either the orientation to like keep it simple, or you can think of it as a di slightly different pin set. So the pin set I, I currently have is DL, UR, and UL. And that essentially just leaves that one pin, single pin move. But if you change the orientation, that gives you, that multiplies this by four. So in total you have uh, 16, unique pin sets that d don't don't even include the alignment move at the end. So I think given all of that, I don't think it's too unlikely that you can find a way to prove that you can definitively solve not just one corner, but two corners using this sort of method.
um, proving that, I'll have to look more into it. But I think this proves that God's number is equal to or less than 13 for now. And I'll look further into if it somehow proves that it's equal to 12. And to further explain my thinking a little bit, uh, I'm not going to show you all the differences, but essentially, um, each of these pin orders slightly affected the corners a bit differently. So let's say the difference between these two was only these two corners being like one this way and one this way. Um, and these two, they had like three slightly different, so like all in the same direction or something like that. And knowing that, to essentially force a corner skip, all you need to do is have one of the corners match the alignment of the cross you're, you're attempting to go for. Um, this is just to keep things maximally simple. Obviously you can force other stuff with different pin sets, but I'm just trying to force it in the same pin set to keep things simple and to like prove it definitively. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, I'm gonna coin this term P, standing for P-E-A, parity of edge alignment because P is stored in the clock. All right, that's enough of me rambling. I hope you enjoyed this new bit of theory. And before I leave you, I'm gonna show you something cool. That's pretty cool, right?